but it's morning. Is Maya Esman herself, uh, who is going to explain us uh, the rigidity of some of loops? And uh, I cannot wait to hear Maya thank the organizer of this workshop. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you. So I will omit that, but I, I will uh, nevertheless uh, would like to thank uh, uh, the organizers of the semester for inviting me here, yeah. because it's, a, it's a wonderful to be here for a prolonged time. Uh, so uh, what I, I, I would like to talk about um, is uh, my uh, joint work uh, with Daniel Parazolo and Loic Tessier. Uh, so it is uh, actually uh, it can be found an archive. It is a preprint. Author, oh, sir. sir. Uh, Daniel Parazolo, uh, whom you know, a lawyer from University uh, of uh, Strasbourg, and uh, myself. Uh, so uh, first, uh, let me introduce, uh, I mean, I, I suppose everybody knows, but just shortly what, what I mean by a saddle loop. Uh, so we start uh, from a real planner, saddle loop, uh, which is a, a subset of R2. So we are given, uh, in fact, uh, three data. So it's um, a vector field or a form uh, uh, at the neighborhood of zero has some open set and a path uh, gamma. So the idea is that we have a vector field that has a singular point, let's say at uh, zero. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, since this is a saddle point, uh, there is a, um, um, attracting and repelling, uh, so stable and unstable uh, uh, manifold, uh, which uh, we suppose are connected uh, by some uh, gamma, which is invariant uh, for for the for the field, so for the flow. Uh, so this gamma is in fact invariant uh, curve that connects a stable and unstable uh, manifold. So one that we have a mono monodromic situation, so that we have. Um, uh, we have uh, accumulation of uh, orbits uh, and, uh, and the loop. Uh, we can define what we call a Poincaré map or a first return map that is defined on some transversal, it doesn't matter which one, uh, that doesn't go through a singular point. So let's say we have a transversal like this and we can parameterize it uh, so that um, there is this uh, inner part of the transversal that is parameterized, for example, by S bigger than zero. And here we define a first return um, uh, map. Uh, so even without uh, parameterization, this makes sense. One that we look at the inner part of the transversal uh, locally at, uh, at the point uh, sigma. Uh, so S is exactly uh, the mapping which attributes, uh, so you, you follow the, the spiral and you re return. It should be an, another uh, way around so that we have attracting spiral, but okay. So to each S we attribute uh, P of S. So this is a Poincaré uh, map, which is in this case, if we parameterize uh, real, uh, so it's defined from uh, neighborhood of the zero to the neighborhood of the zero. Uh, so uh, to generalize the notion a little uh, bit, um, we talk about um, so uh, complex uh, surfaces, uh, foliated surfaces. That means that we have a um, complex or a real surface and the foliation uh, on it. Uh, so uh, su such that we also have a triple. SG, so it's a surface and a foliation that also has a saddle point, uh, meaning that there are uh, there are uh, uh, there are uh, two separatrices coming at that point, and we also take one of uh, one of uh, of the paths that we denote gamma, uh, which will be a smooth curve going, for example, from minus one one uh, to the surface, uh, which uh, at, I, I say closed because I want it to uh, begin and finish at the saddle uh, point. Uh, it should be uh, tangential uh, to the to the uh, to the foliation that we have on the surface, uh, and uh, uh, the 
parts of gamma at minus one image of gamma at minus one and one uh, should come to the point uh, S along um, along uh, different separatrices. So in a way, in higher dimensions, this mimics uh, the notion that we have uh, here. So uh, the main main object with, uh, I will explain why, why I talk about this. So the main uh, object uh, that we work with is not a real cell only, but a complex cell. Uh, so uh, the idea is to look at the cells in uh, in C two, uh, where we have uh, separatrices. Uh, we have now uh, C, so uh, the transversals are again biholomorphic uh, to uh, C. So we are in two complex dimensions, um, and uh, this we denote by Z and this by omega. So again, we have a cell point, uh, which is uh, in fact I will write it now. Uh, locally, locally at the origin, we have a cell. Uh, so uh, let's say I will write it uh, uh, in this form for, for the beginning. Uh, so alpha is uh, non uh, positive, uh, so not zero, not positive, so negative real number. And here are higher order terms. And this is ratio of hyperbolicity of the cell, which can be either rational or irrational and or one so um, it gives us a type of a cell uh, and um, uh, so we now have a complex cell which with transversals that are that are c that are not any more uh, lines uh, and um, the idea is to somehow uh, to somehow uh, again uh, take uh, the foliation defined by this uh, field around the cell and then to glue uh, the separatrices. So if we do it, mm -hmm. so alpha doesn't have to be a complex cell. No, alpha is real. Uh, alpha is real. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's real and uh, positive. I mean, there is some, there are some generalizations uh, with alpha complex, but I'm, I'm not sure I, I would know how to. No, no, yeah, yeah, alpha, alpha, alpha is always uh, in uh, R minus. So Z and uh, Z and uh, um, W are complex. Uh, okay, uh, so um, the idea is to somehow, at least topologically, uh, glue the glue the separatrices and to form a two uh, two complex uh, surface. But the problem is that. In the case of a real, real uh, surface, uh, one can do that, and then using uh, Grauer's embedding theorem, somehow uh, put it so it would be a two a real surface, but it can be also embedded in R two. So one can realize um, the loop by gluing. So taking the cell, gluing the transversals to get this uh, regular mapping here, gluing them by by regular by analytic mapping, and then uh, use the embedding theorem to uh, put it in the plane. So one can realize, in fact, the loop in the plane. Uh, in the complex ca case, uh, we cannot use that. So I stick with this uh, abstract uh, complex uh, surface that is given by a complex cell that has, I will explain later, its uh, corner map and foliation around, singular foliation around. And then uh, we specify another regular map, complex regular map, which would glue uh, the two transversals. So that's why uh, I introduce the notion of um, abstract cell loop. Which we denote by F and R. I will explain what is it. What this is. So uh, F is in fact a prepared cell defined around the origin of uh, C two. Prepared means in some uh, standard normal form, which is usually Poincaré Dulac normal form. Uh, this is known. I, I will I will I will uh, write it as uh, so. This first uh, other other terms vanish. So we can analytically transform by analytic by holomorphic uh, map the foliation around uh, the, the zero, uh, the, the field around zero uh, to a simpler form uh, of this type. Uh, 
where this can be made, uh, this is usually of the type uh, Z, K, uh, Y plus, etc., or can even be made uh, Z, uh, Y plus, etc., but it's, it's, not, it's not important. Uh, at this point, so in some prepared uh, uh, prepared form that is analytically conjugated uh, to our our uh, field, uh, what is actually important is uh, on which uh, on which um, uh, you on which neighborhood of uh, of the origin in C two uh, we now uh, define it. Uh, so this is in fact. Um, um, we call that uh, prepared uh, neighborhood of the origin, um, but actually. Um, and the idea behind it, it is some, some uh, like, a, let's say, uh, I will write like this, uh, it, it, can be, it will be uh, clearer. So it's a domain of this form. Um, so the idea is that it's somehow like a hyperbola, but in, in higher. Uh, dimension and the, uh, 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 wh why uh, because actually we have a field uh, defined uh, only locally at zero so we have a singular foliation locally at zero and we have to ensure that uh, in fact any two points uh, uh, that we take in this u uh, can be connected by a path on this uh, foliation because what happens uh, in in complex ca case so in complex case we have co everything complex and complex time also uh, so what happens is that these curves that are usually not connected here will in complex case connect in a leaf uh, in a way that so we start at some point uh, uh, some point here and now there is a leaf reaching leaf like a curve curve but in, in more dimensions uh, the, the solution uh, reaching uh, this uh, transversal but what can happen is that can Oh, that it can also circle any of the any of the uh, separatrices and come back to the same uh, uh, transversal by what is called monodromy or holonomy uh, map. So uh, what I uh, uh, wanted to say that it's that the lock map, the corner map from here to here uh, becomes sort of multi-valued. Uh, not only because it's logarithmic in some cases, but really because a complex cell, a uh, geometrical complex cell that allows uh, holonomy. So we can, um, to explain it a little bit better, I can start with this uh, linear, linearized case, I omit uh, the, the remainder. And if we uh, write the first integral of this, we get, I, I, so it's like a, a solution curve, so that uh, when I put this equal to some uh, complex uh, number, um, uh, this uh, gives us uh, leaves or solution uh, curves. Uh, and now imagine that we want to compute a Dulac map, what we call a Dulac map. I choose one transversal. Let's say this transversal will be at uh, V equal to one. And the other transversal will be at z equal to one, but it will be a complex uh, complex plane. Uh, so um, let's say that we take a point. Um, this is parameterized, for example, by this separatrix, so by z. And uh, I can take point um, z one, and the lock map will guide me uh, to another transversal one and what I want is this corner map. Um, uh, so uh, if, if, if we try, uh, if, we, if, we, if we take our, our vector field and try to compute this map, the good idea would be, this is linearized, good idea will be to solve it. And then we, for example, get Z of T is equal to Z zero E of T. This is, this is simple, so I'm not, I'm, I'm just solving the first uh, equation. Uh, if we want to start at t equals to zero at the point uh, z one, then uh, z of uh, zero is is a z, the z that I start here. So I actually get at zero z is equal to the point z at which I start. Maybe I should have put z zero z zero, but it's it's some 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 point that is somewhere here. Okay, uh, so we see. If we want to reach this transversal, what, what time do we need? Uh, we need time uh, until uh, Z uh, becomes one. 
So we, we want to solve. And what actually happens is that we get complex logarithm as a solution. So in fact, I, I can explain like this. So this is a complex thing. So it's not only log Z that we get, but log Z e to the two pi i uh, k. So actually we can get log Z plus two pi i k as time. And uh, what happens now that we solve this equation, uh, uh, equation, um, sorry? Minus uh, maybe minus one, yes. Uh, because yeah, sure, it's it's around zero, so it has to be uh, k. Z, e, e, z, uh, so uh, by uh, so each determination of this uh, uh, Dulac uh, corner map is given by this uh, circling in time for two pi i k. So we have infinitely many times on the same leaf that we return to the to the same uh, transpose. And you can also uh, see directly by computing Dulac map either using this first integral because it has to stay on the same solution curve along the, the move when you move uh, by, by Dulac map or by uh, solving the equation uh, completely. But I'm not going uh, to do that now. I, I may just write that in this case we get uh, uh, D of uh, Z uh, it uh, begins with uh, z alpha uh, plus etc. In the case where alpha is um, is a rational number, we will get logarithmic terms also due to this logarithmic time. And uh, when it is uh, irrational, uh, then we will get uh, just uh, uh, powers. So there, these are two types of Dulac uh, germs that, that we consider. Uh, okay, um, we don't request here that uh, real line is preserved, that we come from the real settle, so really complex settle in all its uh, generality, except that alpha is uh, R, R minus. Uh, so what I wanted to, uh, to explain is uh, this domain. The idea uh, behind uh, this domain is that what I said, any two, cur any two points that I take in this uh, four-dimensional uh, uh, U, uh, there should be a path in the foliation that connects them. Why I say that? Because uh, imagine that you start here and you want to do few uh, complex turns. So you go along the leaf, do some complex turns and come back to this leaf. Uh, this may lead you outside your domain. So if you increase the number of, of, of the turns that you want to make, uh, you have to begin closer and closer to zero. So it's not, uh, it's not, re I mean, here, you can, it, it, you, you have to diminish this, this uh, size of the, uh, the domain to be able to do more and more turns. And this is, in fact, in, in the, 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 the reason why a Dulac germ is defined on a standard quadratic domain. Uh, when you do a holonomy, you jump from one determination to the other, you have to decrease the, the size. So to stay in, in this, in this uh, neighborhood. So, okay, so I mean, we have F and we have U and we have to, um, we have to uh, specify another thing and this is R. Uh, but once that I have defined F, uh, I have, as I have explained, um, Dulac germs, so these corner maps defined. Uh, so, but they're, 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 they're multi uh, valued because of uh, everything uh, that I explained. So, uh, we may uh, take uh, any determination of a Dulac. We cannot uh, do a canonical thing. If we had a real settle, we can request that it maps real line to the real line and that we stay in one determination. But here, we cannot. And we, can, we may specify any determination of the Dulac. There is no uh, canonical uh, choice. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, we don't work with uh, really uh, Dulac maps, but with sort of a class of uh, Dulac maps, where we uh, I, I have to repeat a little bit. So uh, I will uh, take this transversal omega, I will write it as line, but it's a complex uh, omega. So omega, omega. So this is this first transversal, which is uh, on the horizontal separatrix. And then there is uh, on the vertical separatrix another one. Uh, this I choose freely. So let's say this is fixed. It's, it's like, um, we can put it always at one. 
And this I chose freely. So this is fixed and this is sort of a floating transversal. And uh, what we do is we take uh, Dulac maps where we allow the transversal to move. So what actually happens? If I move a transversal, there is again, until it's, if it stays inside the domain, there is again a Dulac map defined on this another uh, transversal. And we, what is the relation? The relation is a holonomy or a, let's say, parallel transport between uh, these uh, two transversals. Uh, so what we do, uh, we uh, take as maps, corner maps, uh, all these which go from, let's say, they may start here and I, I, re I reverse a little in the orientation, but F sigma, uh, uh, sigma uh, so that this is uh, floating, so that we may compose uh, uh, D uh, by a holonomy defined by the saddle uh, that connects transversal, let's say, sigma to transversal sigma uh, prime. So uh, another way to specify D is to say that it has its guiding, guiding path. So it means, in fact, that we take uh, one point on this transversal and one point, uh, yeah, we, we take one point on, on this transversal and we look at the paths that reach uh, this transversal. Uh, they can be many because of monodromy, but I choose one. And I say one that I have chosen a path, I have a, 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 a uniquely defined uh, Dulac germ that is defined by a, let's say, transport along the foliation, following this path in the foliation. The path can also be uh, specified uh, or projecting on the, on the, on the axis. But I say it's a path on foliation going from one point to one transversal. And this one that I have specified this guiding path, I have a unique choice. If I change a guiding path to go around and to reach the transversal again, I have another determination of the lock. And in this way, also, if we have two um, horizontal transversals, I can also say, if I take this point, I have one parallel here, there is no singular point, so we have a sort of parallel transport up to this uh, transversal. So this is my colonomy map. So what I specify is in fact, uh, the whole bunch of black maps that correspond to all guiding paths and changes uh, of uh, this uh, transversal. And on the, on, on, on the other hand, this R with which we have to connect the remain, remainder of the, of the uh, uh, saddle to the loop, this would be a holomorphic map. So holomorphic uh, map uh, also has to admit to this uh, shift. So on the other hand, it should be uh, ones that we uh, say uh, it's D and then R. So R should be somehow um, uh, made uh, in a class uh, of equivalence uh, by conjugating by holonomy transports uh, from the other side. So what I now have is a class of these and class of R's, which give me sort of class of Poincaré maps that I know by Poincaré and which are in fact all combinations of R and D where we choose either this or this or some other uh, floating transversal. In this way, we conjugate R and D from two sides. So, so it's not uh, somehow it's, uh... and we also may choose uh, uh, different determinations corresponding to different, different uh, uh, turnings around the cell of, uh, of uh, uh, Dulac map one that we go from here to here. So, um, Okay, so this is this is uh, the class. 
Another thing that I wanted to say uh, that the lock maps, as I have already mentioned, are either of this form or have logarithmic terms. I will uh, specify uh, the series, but we, we have seen it uh, already a few times uh, a bit later. Uh, but in fact, they contain uh, logarithms in the case of uh, rational uh, settle point. So um, we are forced. Uh, we cannot say that they are well defined on this transversal, they are well defined on a cut transversal because they have a logarithmic, logarithmic term. But actually, where they are where, where defined is the Riemann surface uh, of the logarithm. Or if you go with this standard quadratic domain in the logarithmic chart back by exponential uh, map, but in the sense that it is uh, bijective, it will give you a Riemann surface that uh, somehow uh, starts here and then gets smaller and smaller and smaller like this. So they are defined either in the logarithmic chart on, on this domain or on domains uh, in the original Z chart here. Uh, and uh, they are multivalued. Also, this R, which is a, a, a holomorphic map, uh, can be uh, lifted to the universal cover, which is a Riemann surface that does not diminish. In, but, but, but the lifts are the same at every level because it's a reg regular map. While with Dulac, with, uh, with every, with every uh, lift uh, of the uh, segment of, 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 the, of the strip of 2 pi i, uh, we will change uh, the mapping, okay? Because it's uh, multivalued. It's, and it, it, it actually corresponds to, to this uh, choice of, of uh, determination. Once that I go up, uh, I start here, I go up, I go by a Dulac germ here and return back. It's not the same determination as the one that is done on, on here. So, uh, so what we do uh, is uh, that we uh, suppose transversals are universal covers. So they are, in fact, in the logarithmic charts, uh, in the logarithmic chart, the universal cover of a surface where Dulac map is defined is actually this standard quadratic domain of Inashenko. So I will write it um, uh, uh, more, more, in a more precise in a more precise way. Uh, so RP is, as I have said, R composed by D, where we have uh, some equivalence class here and here. And uh, P of, uh, so normally we write the lock map, as we all know, as in, in, in this form. Uh, let's see. P I. Alpha I, where these are, uh, these are somehow, um, uh, increase, uh, increasing to infinity. So this is a Dulac germ that goes uh, like a, a, set, a set, uh, corner cell map. And this is some regular map composing Then we get a, a sequence, uh, a, a asymptotic, asymptotic. Um, so a germ defined on a standard quadratic domain. For example, at the beginning, it is, it is a circle without uh, uh, this cut, but it can be also imagined as a, Riemann surface of the logarithm, so the universal cover, or this is z variable, and then we look in the psi variable, which is log z, which gives us the universal cover of this type, maybe, yeah. Okay, so I pass to this coordinate, because here I have like a map that is well-defined and polymorphic on, on, on complex plane. Uh, so this is a usual thing. Uh, uh, so uh, we get uh, some of the form so, uh, if, uh, so powers are turned to exponentials and logarithms uh, to powers. Uh, this is a polynomial. These are uh, bigger than one and uh, infinitely uh, increasing. Uh, this a is. Uh, is uh, in fact this alpha. So it's uh, in uh, R minus. No, it's minus log, so it's uh, it's bigger than zero. It's in R plus, and uh, B is uh, e to the minus a. So um, what we have 
is that this a is always bigger than zero. This can be a complex number because we have a complex cell, and uh, it can be um, so it has a, a real part of. now depending if this is uh, zero or not uh, zero uh, this will have modulus either uh, one or not and if it has uh, modulus uh, uh, one this would correspond to this um, uh, a uh, oh, sorry. Uh, no i think i, I did it uh, in, in the wrong direction this so okay uh, and now uh, if if a real part of b is equal uh, to, to zero um, then we have a of modulus uh, one uh, which corresponds to what we call if alpha is equal to one invariant case if alpha is bigger or smaller than one, then we have what we call a hyperbolic or strongly contracting uh, or strongly repelling uh, case. So cases alpha uh, bigger than one or smaller than one, then we look at the inverse. Uh, cases um, uh, A, is a by modulus uh, different than one we call hyperbolic they give us some sort of stronger contraction as is the case with analytic uh, germs if you have z to the square or one half z it's somehow contracting uh, faster than if you have z plus so case where b uh, where a re real part of b is equal uh, to uh, zero will correspond to um, invariant case and in the special case when a is equal to one it's called the parabolic case so we actually uh so uh okay so okay okay so this kind of uh, uh the, the germs that are defined on a standard quadratic domains and expand in a series uh, like uh, this as uh, my, my, my standard uh, work of Inyashenko, they, they form a group uh, and uh, uh, also to this group we can attribute a um, formal group that corresponds to their asymptotic uh, expansions. So this is sort of Dulac group of germs like this and this will denote uh, the group uh, of their formal of their formal uh, series. Mm -hmm. A is real. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, A is complex. Uh, alpha is real. Alpha is the ratio of hyperbolicity of the cell. Little A, little A is complex, real uh, Little A is real. All the other coefficients yes all the others are complex so we don't request any uh, I, if it comes from the real cell you are in a better situation you can request the coefficients to go uh, to, to be to be real but no 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 it's just a general uh, no no because uh, you don't uh, ask that the real line is preserved yeah. if you what is complexified is a for is a vector field. I, I mean, but I, yeah. I, I admit uh, in the further um, expansions, uh, uh, complex coefficients also. Okay. Uh, so. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, so uh, now uh, I come uh, to the question that we actually uh, I, I will I will uh, uh, say uh, the problem uh, that we uh, try uh, to solve. So one one thing that I will not go into details uh, now is that a sort of conjugation of abstract uh, saddle loops uh, here, analytic conjugation like conjugation of which preserves like a diffeomorphism that preserves foliation. 
uh, will correspond uh, to the analytic uh, conjugation of their Poincare maps. Okay, so, so this is sort of first uh, uh, statement uh, that we prove uh, is that uh, to conjugate these abstract cell loops to make equivalence class with respect to a diffeomorphism, it will be the same as if you take uh, one representative of its dual germ. So you choose one D and one R, one choice of uh, transversal sigma, one choice of D, one choice of uh, R and you conjugate them by an analytic germ in the sense of conjugation. So actually equivalence of uh, foliation will transmit to conjugation of uh, Poincare return maps. And then we pose a question, um, are there, is there, usually there is a difference in, for example, analytic germs between formal and analytic classes. So formal classification will not imply analytic classification. It is the thing that we saw, for example, for parabolic germs, uh, that actually a formal class is defined by two numbers, uh, but analytic classes are given by this ical voronin moduli. So there are infinitely many analytic classes. So analytic cl classes are very, are, are, it's a much, uh, much uh, more, um, I would say, precise uh, data on a diffeomorphism. So here, what we prove, if we have a Poincaré map, of this form. Uh, so I will, I will state it as a theorem as a rigidity result. So once that you have a Poincare map and you have another Poincare map, so you have one cell and another abstract cell. And if you have two germs like this, and if you uh, conjugate them formally, So this means that phi hat is a formal diffeomorphic series. Uh, so it's a formal diffeomorphism. I don't admit uh, terms of logarithm type. It's really an analytic series because we want to mimic the conjugation uh, of the foliation, uh, which we, where we don't allow um, logarithms. So it's really analytic. Uh, an analytic, formal analytic conjugacy um, of the type uh, Taylor, Taylor formal, uh, not Taylor, because we don't know the convergence, but uh, power, power series uh, of integer type. Uh, okay, and uh, once that we have this for two Poincaré maps uh, like this, uh, what we can conclude that uh, phi hat is actually analytic germ. This is originally formal classes become the same uh, as analytic classes. So, uh, in a previous work with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Fama, uh, we tried to uh, conjugate two Dulac germs in a class uh, of, um, trans, of 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 trans series. So, uh, in fact, we admit here also a ramified germs also with Jean Philippe, and uh, then we saw that actually formal conjugacy and analytic conjugacy are completely different. So formal is very short. There are short, short uh, three, three data that gives you a formal class. While in the analytic class, we have the whole spectrum of a Calvaroni moduli again. But that's, that's because we admit uh, ramified conjugations. Here, we ask only analytic or integer power uh, conjugations. And by this, we somehow make situation rigid because even formal classes are now big, but they are same as analytic in a, in, in a way. So, so this is uh, the, the, the main result. Uh, so I, I don't have, um, yeah, I have another 10 minutes. Uh, so um, uh, let me tell you a, a few words about um, uh, uh, how, how we actually uh, do it. Uh, so, so um, what we define uh, here, I, I mentioned that what we, uh, uh, that in the, comp in, the, in the situation of complex cell, we have the thing that we ho call a holonomy uh, map. I will try uh, to illustrate it on, uh, so we have a germ 
uh, described here. And uh, we have a logarithmic chart. Uh, with uh, so in, in every what, what actually happens for the dynamics of this germ I cannot go into details now the dynamics of this uh, germ will look somehow like this so we have um, if I write it in the original in the original Z chart uh, we have vectors which are attracting and repelling for the dynamics, if we look at the discrete dynamics. Similarly, as in the case of, uh, uh, for example, parabolic analytic germs. And then, because we have infinite surface, they start overlapping and they go up and down. So there are not only just two petals and then we finish, or three petals and we finish, but we somehow have infinitely many above and below. <laughs> Yes, they're here. So they intersect here. Uh, so this is, uh, for example, attracting. Uh, it intersects with uh, repelling and so on. So, and uh, uh, what is actually a uh, 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 holonomy? Uh, ho so, so, so what we have for, for these uh, germs is that uh, uh, if we take uh, Dulac germ B, and if we pass if we pass uh, to the next next uh, sheet if we lift by uh, by a day transform 2, 2 pi i plus or e 2 pi i times uh, uh, z is the same as doing a holonomy map of um, the germ so we usually write it in a, in a, in this uh, coordinates where let's say big D becomes small d and it's expressed in this coordinate so that we have really a holo, holomorphic uh, germ on, on, on this, uh, on this uh, domain. And uh, uh, therefore we have, uh, and therefore, therefore we have uh, uh, D times uh, Tho uh, is equal to uh, holonomy uh, times uh, uh, D uh, times uh, Tho. So the idea is you, this will be, for example, the first determination, the first uh, uh, one that does not circle. Let's say if you choose one of the determinations of the lock map, then you reach the transversal, for example, here, you make its holonomy. And by that, you in fact arrive uh, at uh, another uh, determination of a Dulac germ. So it means uh, here that if you uh, if you start with a point here, and here you have a Dulac germ defined, it leads you, for example, here. Uh, then you can first make a uh, uh, you can first um, you can either so the idea is that you go um, yes you have d0 here and you have a holonomy after that that brings you to another uh, another sheet and uh, now this uh, if you go by to my direct uh, 2 pi i shift here and uh, then Okay, so, uh, so you have uh, H times D, this is D1. Uh, first you apply Tho, and then you apply um, so um, I mean, what it means that uh, you can either go with um, with um, 
uh, this zero. So this is one determination, or you can go with the holonomy, uh, holonomy map uh, to the to the to the next uh, sheet, and uh, come back down. It would be the same as if you take another determination uh, on the other sheet. So basically, this is the relation that that, that holds. So we don't call this map a holonomy map, but we call it a variation. So actually, once that you have a germ defined, because this D1 and D0 is artificial, it's the same D because it's defined everywhere, but it's just a notation for D on different levels. So um, our variation is a germ that corresponds to this holonomy map. Uh, so uh, instead of holonomy, we write variation. And our variation is therefore defined as um, as a Lie bracket of um, of uh, Dulac uh, germ, and it represents holonomy, which I tried to uh, try to explain not very successfully. But I mean, it's uh, it's this relation, and then uh, you you regard this as uh, as a variation, and everything is regarded in this uh, lifted uh, surface. So um, actually, uh, how you kind of, so so now. If this variation of a, of, a, of a germ D is equal to identity, this would mean that your germ D will uh, has the same uh, levels everywhere, and it uh, comes by lifting an analytic germ. So if variation of D is uh, zero, then you have actually a lift of a diffeomorphism. If your variation of D is identity, uh, no, uh, identity, if your variation is now, so if, if, if this is the case, then uh, D is a lift of diffeomorphism. Now you go to the next level. Now you ask that variation is a diffeomorphism. Once that you ask a variation to be a diffeomorphism, you get that D uh, it can be realized as a block map of a complex cell, a corner map of a complex cell. Why? So once that this is projection of this, so is a different morphism, it says that this, uh, that this D is in fact, this corner map of complex cell. So why is that? Uh, because uh, variation corresponds to holonomy, and once that you specify a holonomy uh, on a transversal uh, by a procedure given by Matei Musu, you can somehow uh, uh, construct the. Uh, by, by, it's, it's based on 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 these parts that I described, and lifting of the parts, uh, you can uh, somehow uh, give the uh, saddle uh, that will realize this. Uh, diffeomorphism as its holonomy map. So in complex cells, holonomy maps that that, uh, that are monodromy maps of some transversals are always parabolic or hyperbolic or other diffeomorphisms, but are always analytic diffeomorphisms. So this is the way how we characterize uh, D. So the basic, basically the statement here is we have, if we have uh, two, uh, two um, uh, Poincaré maps that are uh, R, uh, composed uh, by Dulux of the cell, so which corresponds to to, uh, to a subgroup of uh, phi above, because we really want them to be realized as Dulux of the cell composed by R. And this is more general. This is more general. This can be, I, I mean, it can be a few of the cells uh, together or even not realizable. But um, if we ask only, that we take V of the cell, so characterized by variation equal uh, variation in this class, and compose it by a regular map lifted. This will give us a class that we uh, consider, and in this class we actually have this uh, this uh, rigidity uh, rigidity uh, result. So I think uh, I mean I, it's based um, uh, it's based in the. In the hyperbolic case, it, it is based uh, on a result. Um, uh, we use actually a result of my PhD uh, and Tamara's PhD student, uh, Dino. Maybe he will talk something about that later. Um, but in the parabolic uh, case, we actually use uh, the fact uh, 
uh, that uh, once uh, that you have a formal conjugacy uh, between uh, two uh, two uh, p's like this, uh, if you if you if you if you have a formal conjugacy of uh, two like this what actually happens is that we take variation we take a holonomy or variation operator to whole equation and variation behaves well with respect to uh, conjug conjugation so what happens is that one holonomy and the other holonomy uh, of the of the of the uh, of the cell so one or the other is conjugated by the same uh, formal uh, series. So now these are parabolic uh, diffeomorphisms if we are in parabolic case. And uh, that means uh, that uh, these uh, psi, uh, these uh, uh, phi uh, hat are not only uh, not only power series, but are uh, in some general class, depending on on the on the yeah, on, on the multiplicity of both holonomies. So both holonomies will have the same multiplicity this is a known result for the cell uh, but the uh, residual invariants uh, so the other formal invariants will be uh, in, in a sort reciprocal so re reciprocal one is rho and one is y minus a rho so uh, it's actually based on the on the fact that um, a group uh, uh, generated uh, by these uh, uh, G and H is not monic is not generated uh, uh, by one by one uh, by one by one Germ. And in this case, we managed to uh, prove that this has to be in, at the same time, uh, let's say K1 uh, summable and K2 summable, which implies analyticity. So this is actually the, the, the main idea of, uh, of the proof. So, Any comment, question? Can we move on right? Yeah. Which, uh, maybe just one uh, question. So, uh, this hypothesis that you have a complex set of, that you have this alpha uh, negative, uh, I can understand that uh, somehow. Uh, you need real part of uh, alpha negative. I think it should work. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I said I am not uh, able to answer because I know there is a possibility of generalizing, but yeah. we didn't uh, do it. So I, I haven't looked for a long time. Uh, I, I, I don't know for, for complex alphas, actually. It's, in some so cases, what, it is the so same. What I believe is a uh, kind of... It, if, if uh, it is the real part, which is something important, because so if the real part is negative, I think it should rule exactly the same. I think there, yeah, there is as, some some. You have if it is uh, positive, uh, uh, and it's a different story. I, I mean, I cannot answer uh, correctly. I mean, I, I know there is some. I can generalize a little, but I, I yeah. So let's thank I again. Uh, we resume at uh, well a quarter to eleven.